I love getting new photo books and I love sharing them here on the channel with all of you. I'm really excited about this one. This is Passing Time by Sage Sawyer, one of my all-time favorite photographers by far. This is her latest book, and just like last month where we took a look at the Winogrand color book together, we're going to dive into this one. I'm just going to kind of share my thoughts as we flip through it and just gush over <laughs> Sage's work and how much I love it. Uh, so thank you all for joining me for this one, and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you all about them later and how you can save some money, but let's not waste any more time. We're going to dive into this book right now. This is Passing Time. It was just published by Nazareli Press. Um, this is the same publisher that published American Scene, which is a book I've talked about before, one of my favorite books of hers, uh, one of my favorite photo books just in general. So really excited to dig into this and uh, take a look at it with all of you. Here in the introduction, she states that these photos were made between 1979 and 1985. They had never been printed before, and during the pandemic, she revisited the archive and uh, came across all of this work here that had never been seen before, so this book is the result of that. And one interesting just sentence really stood out to me as I read this. She says, I was obsessed with making the best complex pictures that I could of people hanging out in neighborhoods, in their homes, and on their porches. That one sentence really stood out to me because there's so much going on in so much of her work. This right here is a great example of that. You've got this swing set here with the kids on the swings. He's hanging from the top of the support there. You've got a little one walking. This one right here in the background on the bike. The trains behind them. There's just so much going on and the composition is amazing. I've often wondered, is that a conscious choice of hers to try and include as much as possible and to really fill the frame with a lot of different elements. So uh, that one sentence just really stood out to me right off the bat. More just perfect examples of that right here. I love any of her work that has pictures of multiple people, and there that's a sort of common thread. There's usually a group of people, not just one individual person in the frame. These close-up kind of intimate shots where it looks like she's using, you know, a 28 millimeter lens, maybe a 35, getting down low on their level. You've got three different people uh, kind of throughout the frame. He's looking off in this direction. He's looking off to the right. And then you've got this young boy in the back uh, just kind of like leaning up against this porch post. Love the way this one's framed with this sort of sub framing with the boy right there in the window with uh, presumably his his mom sitting there in the driver's seat looking towards him. And these really like subtle sort of uh, expressions or gestures like I love that she's just kind of standing here with her hands behind her back. She's, you know, kind of looking down. He's standing here with this radio next to her, kind of, you know, towards her, giving her his attention. Uh, there's just something interesting and subtle about this sort of exchange and the way that this is really the main focus of the photo. They're out here kind of just in the middle of nowhere, you know, uh, within the frame that is like they're on, you know, essentially the side of the road. Did she, you know, ask them to stand right here? Is this where they were as she approached them? Um, I just love really simple and subtle kind of photos like this. She has so many great pictures of just kids being kids, especially in this time frame. Uh, it would look so different, you know, compared to what kids do and how they interact today versus back then. So much of her work has this feeling of just, you know, childhood and summer. Her photos are just so full of life. You have these kids here playing, you know, with this water hydrant all of their expressions there. These guys right here posing for the photo. He's blowing a bubble with his gum. You've got this one off here to the side on his bike looking super cool. Like there's just so much character. This one here immediately made me think of her book Animals. Um, that's an incredible book if you have a chance to pick that one up. But the way this is framed, you kind of have this big circle from the hose all the way to the stream of the water. Uh, the way the shadows are just perfectly defined. It's just, it's so good. And then you have quiet pictures like this where it's from a distance, you get much more of a sense of, you know, the landscape and where the people are in the pictures. They're much smaller in the frame. And, you know, for these two examples, they're just individual kids by themselves. It's really interesting going from scenes like that and then, you know, to stuff like this where it's a packed frame, a lot of people involved, a lot of emotion and expression. 
just beautiful everyday kind of scenes, but they're shot and composed uh, seemingly in a really like meticulous kind of way. And everything feels intentional. Um, they don't just feel like snapshots. It feels like a specific moment that was just framed up so well. You've got essentially a, a backyard boxing match with these kids and they've got an audience around them. I often wonder what it would look like making pictures like this. Like these are just such normal, personal moments. They're nothing too revealing. It's just real slice of life, like real depictions of what was going on. And I'm always curious what it would look like to make work like this today, given how different everything is with photography in a digital world people seem to be much more wary of cameras and, you know, what the photographer is doing and what their intentions are. To me, it just feels like that might affect the approach and even the outcome today versus back then. But who knows? I love this one. This guy here inside the house uh, through the screen, the woman there, she's, you know, holding on to one of her feet. She kind of has this like unsure sort of look. She's looking away from him, kind of giving him the shoulder, whereas he's, uh, you know, he doesn't seem to be too shy. He seems to be uh, pretty inviting for her. So I just love that whole exchange, the welcome mat right here at the bottom. Just fun, subtle interactions like that. They're great. And to think so many of her books, like Animals, American Scene, Same-Sex Couples, uh, there's all kinds of work that she's made that we've already seen and going into the archive and there's still so many gems in there. I could just look at Sage's work all day long, um, and I have. It's just, it's so beautiful and timeless. There's something about her work that it doesn't feel dated in any way. Even given the time period and knowing when the pictures were made, um, there's something about it that just, it always feels cohesive across all of her work. This one right here, when I first flipped to this page, I was just so excited. I love the composition of this. Beautiful, everyday kind of scene. It's framed nice. The light is great. But just at the very bottom in the center of the frame, you have this guy who's out in his sunbathing chair. Just such an interesting composition choice to include him in the bottom there. And I just, I love that. This is Paige's newest book, Passing Time, and if you haven't already picked this book up, I would highly encourage you to do so. I have yet to pick up a book of hers that I didn't just fall in love with. I hope you all enjoyed this look at Passing Time, and if you did, I've got some really exciting news that does pertain to Sage herself. So don't go anywhere. We're going to get into that right after I thank our sponsor today, Squarespace. When I first launched my website, mattdayphoto.com, around 10 years ago, I decided to use Squarespace to do that, not only because it's super easy to use, but it has everything you need in one place. You browse through all of their templates to choose from, you find one that you like, and then you just start customizing it yourself. I share work from personal projects using their gallery pages. I have a sign-up form for my email newsletter where I get to share things and update all of you each month. I sell my prints, zines, photo books, everything directly through the online store, which is built into the website. All of these things, everything I do, it's all in one place thanks to Squarespace. If you feel like it might be overwhelming or just too much for you to do yourself, they have 24-7 customer service that are always available. I've used them myself plenty of times. If I can do all of this stuff entirely by myself, I'm sure you can do it too. You can try it out for yourself with a free trial at squarespace.com, but when you're ready to launch the website, go to squarespace.com slash mattday and use the code mattday at checkout. That's going to save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I hope you all enjoyed this look at passing time. Uh, if this was your first time seeing Sage's work, let me know in the comments. I got an email a few weeks ago from a viewer saying, you know, I just bought passing time. It's an amazing book. I'm, I'm sure you've already ordered it. Um, I actually found out about her work through your YouTube channel and the photo book videos, which is just the coolest thing for me to hear. That's always my goal with the photo book videos uh, is to just encourage people to check out the work of these photographers and hopefully introduce photographers to people for the first time. And to, you know, for that to be Sage, that's just incredible. Like I said, she's one of my all time favorites. And that brings me to the really exciting news. I've had these sort of small interactions with Sage on social media before, basically me just telling her like 
I'm a huge fan. Um, but I recently sent her an email and just, you know, formally introduced myself and told her what I do here on the channel with the book videos and everything. And I asked her if she would be up for having a conversation that I could share here on the channel. And she said, yeah, that sounds great. I would love that. And I immediately was just like on cloud nine and also super nervous because I'm just such a huge fan. But here in a few days, uh, we'll be hopping on a call and I can talk to her about just everything, her process, her work, influences of hers uh, as she's out there shooting and the approach, bookmaking all of the things. Uh, it's going to be just a natural conversation. I don't have specific questions in mind, but I do have things that I just want to hear her talk about. And uh, I'm just super excited to share that with all of you and incredibly grateful that she would be up for doing that with me here on the channel. So uh, expect that in the near future. And wish me luck, I guess. Um, thank you to everybody watching this video. Um, I hope you're excited for the conversation with Sage. Uh, thank you for watching the photo book videos. I appreciate those that appreciate the photo books uh, as much as I do, so I always enjoy these. Um, that's it for today, though. If you have any questions, let me know. We can keep talking in the comments, but that's all for today. Love you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.